means to shape your trees, uh, that has a similar effect, perhaps almost multiplied many times over, particularly if you're doing it quite savagely and reducing your um, tree volume back to close to the trunk. Um, if you do that in winter, then when the tree wakes up in spring, your mature tree, it really will explode in some cases and produce masses of wood. That's why when people are doing it for the first time, they sometimes think it's a good idea, and I agree with them, to do it in the during the growing season. Uh, now that can be during June or July, depending on the variety and the summer, but the, the later you do it, a bit into July, you'll have a, um, a reduced effect on the growth. So what happens as you, if you do it towards the end of the tree's growing cycle, then um, what it does, it puts its energy into fruit production rather than to growth. So it has a calming effect on the tree rather than a stimulating effect. The same thing goes for very young trees. You can summer prune very young trees by hand with saws or secateurs, um, and that will have a calming influence on trees that are growing too much. Um, for young trees now, most people are going to do it, uh, the major pruning in the winter, but for the first two, three years, while you can still reach them by from the ground or standing on a crate, taking out the summer growth, the narrow angles in the summer, is often quite a good uh, thing to do. Um, you must be careful of not doing it in some trees because they do respond by making the branches that come up below even more vigorous. But we're going to look at some, obviously, winter pruning today. Most of you have got large acreages to cope, cope with, and you'd like to get started straight after harvest. No. <laughs> so we've done why, when, we've got the pros and cons of summer and winter pruning. Any more questions? Do stop me at halfway through if you have, or any criticism. <laughs> Do speak up if you have. I haven't, re I haven't rehearsed this, so when I'm standing here, I'm going, what's John going to say now? <laughs> how, how to prune, that was the third one. An assistant. Well, <laughs> <Sorry? laughs> <laughs> how? Well, essential tools of the trade, I mean, many of you have got these, but I'm amazed I do go to growers. I went to one the other, other day who's got tidy acreage of fruit but came out with the most awful pair of secateurs I've ever seen uh, that certainly worked um, man for the job. So do invest in a decent pair of secateurs. And I always recommend bypass secateurs. That's this sort, not necessarily this make. The sort where you've got a blade and an anvil. Uh, that, that, sorry, that, that the blade bypasses. That's why they're called bypass secateurs. The other sort are like Rolex secateurs. You still see those in, in shops and uh, in the form of loppers as well, where the blade, blade comes down on the middle of the anvil and cuts through it with a slicing action like you would a knife on a chopping board. They can do a fair bit of damage, particularly on more mature branches. So, number one, a pair of secateurs. A lot of people use Felco. They're as good as anything. They're usually guaranteed for life and you can get spare parts. I also like these Sandvik Barco ones. These are ergonomically designed, like I am. <laughs> they, they, don't, they do less, very less straining of your wrist, so we're told. But they're, they're, they're both almost identical. Another little thing to look for, and both of these have got it, in the more expensive models of secateurs, they've filed down the anvil at the tip to, uh, to make it flatter and more pointed. That means you can get in the young trees and take out small snips much more cleanly. And about clean cuts, clean cuts are important. They're particularly important with young trees around the leader where you're trying not to damage the leader. If you cut roughly or rip them, um, you will 
almost it's a waste of time doing it because the tree will grow another branch in its place, probably where you didn't want it. As the tree gets older and you're doing them with these sorts of big machines, the rough cuts aren't quite as much of a problem, the tree will recover. But we're talking about young branches starting out their life from the trunk and doing with, with secateurs. You might as well do them tidily rather than um, untidily. So we have one suggestion about secateurs. Uh, go for a roll handle secateurs yeah. rather than rigid. Well, yes. <coughs> Next stage up. The heads are both the same. I've got, I've got a pair of roll handle ones. Down here. As you, you've got some? Yes, we, we invested in a pair for Chris because we thought he'd got a bit of life left in him. <laughs> so those are exactly the same head but a rolling handle, which if you're doing thousands and thousands of cuts, stop you getting um, repetitive stress, stress syndrome. Um, so another good idea, likely to cost you between 50 and 80 pounds for a pair of roll, roll handle ones nowadays, but a good investment, last you a lifetime. Sorry? Oh yes, you can also now get, good with the good makes, you can get right-handed and left-handed, and they'll actually fit to a size that will fit your hand and opening and blade sizes and everything now, if you go for the top of the range. So, a very good thing. Um, so, I think what we're looking at is um, the tools, and the other thing, you, obviously, is a decent saw. They come in all sizes. I put mine down somewhere. This, I bought a baby saw today. Um, <coughs> Quite a fine blade, ideal for, for young, um, young trees. Uh, Japanese blade, uh, not set, they're file set, so that when, as you put your hand down the blade, um, you'll find they don't, the teeth don't stick out, so it makes a very, very thin and smooth, smooth cut. They're all, there are really impossible to sharpen, uh, just look after them. They'll, they've done a bit of damage to me in the past, once or twice, you don't know you've been cut. But it is worthwhile investing, and with most of them you get a replacement blade. Uh, the older type of saw um, had to be set, and they were usually set quite widely, and you pulled out a fair bit of wood, so they were a lot more effort to use. Most of these saws now, the modern ones, work on the back stroke. As you pull towards you, they cut, so there's no point ramming them forward. They will also break very easily. The first one of these I used, um, I snapped it. Uh, they went off bang like a gun. Uh, they're very uh, hard-tempered steel, and they will sort of almost explode. 